All right, so we're out here today and we're working on a like a shed um, here and I've already begun the uh, the posts here are four by four posts they're 10 foot long so I have about two foot or a little bit more down in the ground uh, here and that leaves me with roughly eight foot um, up in the air it's not exact so there's six of them uh, in the ground out here I guess you can't see this one over here oh well, maybe you can yeah so there's that one. Let's see, my dimensions that I'm building this thing are 11 foot, uh, this opening here is 11 foot across, and then it's 14 foot from the very last uh, post up there to the front, so 14 foot. This uh, center post here is roughly seven feet, um, seven foot, seven foot um, in the opening there. So these are pressure treated ground contact uh, lumber. I uh, used a post hole digger to uh, make the holes in the ground. Here's the post hole digger. And then I mixed up a sack of concrete uh, for each post. It only took a 60 pound sack of concrete for each uh, for each one. And then they're set uh, nice and solid in the ground uh, here. This is a two by six um, at the top, 14 foot long, uh, two by six. And it's fastened to the post to kind of give it a little more rigidity. So. So the next phase of the project is I'm gonna build some uh, some uh, trusses, three trusses um, up there and then put some uh, pieces of wood in between the trusses so that I can use a, a like a polycarbonate plastic uh, roof um, up there to keep this whole area dry. So, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of keep you apprised of this little project that I'm uh, building here and how I'm going about doing it. So the floors, I imagine I'm going to get some uh, road base um, and put in some border around the bottom of these uh, posts here and then use a road base uh, for the surface to walk on or park a trailer on or uh, something like that. Who knows, maybe I'll put a few lights um, up in the, uh, in the rafters there and have an extension cord that runs to those, those lights and everything. So, so yeah, so that's my little project for today. Maybe you can glean a little bit of... Uh, uh, insight information from this uh, little building project that I'm doing so what else is important um, I shot uh, elevations on these posts um, using a builders level and so each post has a level mark on it so that I can um, set everything nice and level um, on the post so it doesn't look all cockeyed and cattywampus so that's important um, if you don't have a builders level then it will be like a water level um, or something like that. So if you don't know what a water level is, just uh, Google water level. And basically it's a tube filled with water and you hold the, the tube up to the post um, here with the water in it so that you can make level lines all throughout on your post so that you're working level and not all cattywampus. So, so yeah, there you go. I guess I'll pop back in again when there's a, another interesting part to, to talk about. So there you go. Bye. All right. So here we are back at the shed building project. And I am working on the trusses next. And they're right over here. I went over to the hardware store, Home Depot, bought some lumber. Here it is right here. And now I'm working on laying out these trusses. And basically what I do is I make this bottom cord um, put a few marks um, on it and stuff. Find the center. Here's my little T-square. Uh, and then I put a mark straight up on this thing to this top uh, rafter uh, here. Then I put a mark there on that bottom uh, cord there. And then I put a mark on this uh, rafter piece as well. And then I can use that as a template for the other side. And then once this is all built, I can build a bunch of these uh, roof trusses from these uh, templates that I just made right here. I'm gonna use uh, plywood as a gusset plate um, on the corners and I can show that to you a little bit later on. So there you go. And signing off for a second. All right, so here we are building some trusses for the with a little shed um, over there. So here we have our, uh, here's our ceiling joist right here and the 
rafters um, up here, and then we're gonna have some purlins uh, coming out of this thing um, as well to give it some strength. I think I'll have a little uh, member right here in the center as well um, when I build it. But, but yeah, all the parts are cut out, all the template um, pieces are made, and now I need to do some gussets um, on these corners here, and then away they go. So there you go, you are updated. All right, here we go. Here's some uh, gusset plates on the on the truss here. It is plywood that's, uh, I guess it's, I don't know, it's half an inch or um, probably stronger than three eighths. So. so anyway, there's that and I make these gusset plates and then what I do is I use this uh, staple gun here with these nice heavy duty staples. These are inch and a half long and then pow, stick them right through the gusset plate just blast the heck out of it with a bunch of these uh, staples and then it makes a nice uh, tough tough truss here so there's that and then on to the next project all right you can see it starting to come together now so here's all our little gusset plates um, here on these trusses and then I have those purlins starting to be installed here some of them are cut in like these one at the very bottom and one at the very top, they're cut in so I can do a little um, fascia board um, on the front of it. And then some are on the inside here to give it a little bit of strength on edge for when I put the, the roofing on. So yeah, so there you go. Coming together, it'll be a nice little, little shed here. So let's see, 14 foot long from the corner post to corner post and then 11 foot uh, wide so from corner post to corner post and there will be a little bit of an overhang there uh, looks like about I don't know, a little more than a foot so 14 inches or so and then this way it'll be about a foot uh, overhang this way and yeah it'll do a good job so so far I guess this is I think this is day two uh, working on this thing and a little more to go I guess it would make it a little faster or easier if I had a taller ladder or maybe another person helping me out but one man show for now so there we go all right so let's see we're getting some uh, some roof panels up here some polycarbonate roof panels and I've had really good luck with these they seem to last a good long time Put a lot of screws in them and and then they uh, keep the weather out pretty good so so yeah we'll show some more of this tomorrow when I have a little more daylight but this is what I've been working on out here right now there you go signing off so this is a product that I got from Home Depot it's like a deck stain and it doesn't have a lot of uh, tint um, to it it just kind of gives it a light colored uh, stain and it seals the wood it kind of moisturizes it and I think it'll last a little bit longer as well this is a another small building that I did uh, some time ago with the same roofing material and it's holding up really well this is about five years old and yeah it just the sun hammers down on it and it really uh, does a good job so So here's some Simpson brackets that you can get from Home Depot and they uh, will reinforce the corners and give it some some sheer strength. Um, I found the prices to be a little bit high so I ended up making my own versions um, of these brackets uh, with some aluminum and drilling holes um, in them and that sort of thing. So that's what I did there. Hey, so... Here's the end of the project and it's all done and I, I've been keeping you updated along the way but if uh, you want to check out over here I put these little cross braces in I'm right here this is just quarter inch aluminum I got this from a local steel supply um, put some holes in it and then put fasteners some nice lag bolts um, in here to uh, help keep it a little bit sturdy um, in the wind I found that this was a little bit less expensive of a route to go than to get like Simpson uh, brackets and stuff 
I looked at the price of some of the Simpson brackets. In fact, I might include a picture uh, of them in here, but they were just, I don't know, three times, four times as much as doing something like this. So this was a little more economical route. Um, and then the uh, polycarbonate roof uh, up here, it should last a long time. I'll try to include a picture of another uh, roof that I did that's about five or six years old now, and it's still holding together really well. Um, the, the wind, the rain, it makes that neat sound. The rain makes that neat sound on the plastic when it's uh, uh, raining, so I like that. And those fasteners do a good job keeping all the um, uh, keeping all the moisture out. It's important that when you do the fasteners, you put the fasteners on the top of the ridge as opposed to the valley. Um, the reason for that is when the water runs down the valleys, that's a leak point um, underneath there. And it's not as much of a leak point if those fasteners are on top um, of the valleys. Also, the directions call out for more fasteners to be installed than what I put in here. Um, but I think this is an adequate number uh, for, my, for my purposes. So there you go. Later on, I may uh, put a little gravel down here to give it a nice solid um, base for things to park on. You know, you can park your boat underneath there, a tent trailer, a car, um, you know, whatever you have. You want to keep out of the weather and the rain. So, so let's see. There you go. You can have a look at the, the framing on the inside here. This is kind of how it, how it looks when you're all done um, on the inside. You saw that I used to... Um, this uh, a sealer, a, like a deck sealer on the boards to kind of moisturize them a little bit and give them a little extra life. Um, yeah, all the hardware, the screws, um, it's a nice... Now, I wouldn't walk up there. It's probably not strong enough for me to like jump around and walk up there, but it's certainly strong enough to keep the weather and elements out. So it's made just strong enough to uh, do its job, but not like dance on the roof or anything like that. So there you go. The uh, rough cost for all of this, um, these materials is about $1,000. So just the roofing panels alone were something like $500 for the roof panels and then the, uh, all the little the plastic strips that help line up all the panels and the fasteners for it. So, so there's a bulk of the, of the cost right there, but this uh, roof's gonna do a really good job um, and last a long time, I think. You know, I've used other structures like this tent um, style one over here, and I have a steel one um, over here. The steel one costs a lot more um, to, you know, to have installed and whatnot. This one costs less money than, uh, than doing something like this, but um, I don't think it's going to last quite as long. The sun is going to, you know, beat down on this thing, the wind, it's going to get little tears in it, um, and it'll start leaking eventually. Um, I'm going to guess about three years um, on that. The steel one's going to last a long time, indefinitely. And this one, I don't know. This one should last a good long time um, as well. So, so there you go. And please like and subscribe to my video. And that helps me out. I can put more content um, up there. And uh, thanks for watching this one. And I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you have a question. Um, and I'll try to get to your... Uh, to your question or um, if you hated the way I built this I probably won't respond to your comment sorry so there you go